Hello and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. ThinkTech Hawaii is currently live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com as well as on ThinkTech Hawaii's Facebook and YouTube channel. And for viewers out there who are watching us live, you may email us questions to questions at thinktechhawaii.com. Ah, now that we've gotten that intro out of the way, I am excited to start today's show. We will be talking about high climb, bouldering top rope, and lead climbing. And with us today are three members of the high climb team, Nicholas Pregel, Andre Hoyos, and Anthony Bagnoli. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Hello. Let's start with intros. Nick, since I reached out to you first, <laughs> let's start with you and let's pull up um, photo two as well. Hey, hello everybody. Thank you, Kathleen, for having me on today. Um, as far as my role here at High Climb, I'm one of three currently certified personal trainers uh, are here at the gym. Um, my background really was not in climbing to begin with. Um, I trained my whole life, weight training, strength training. But finding this place for me was a catalyst to really get seriously into the weight training as you see in the background here. So we have a great gym, we have everything you need. Yeah, come check it out. Programs are available. Whatever your goal is, we can make it happen. Or we can at least strive to make it happen. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. Andre, tell us about yourself. Um, well, I've been climbing for about 15 years now. Um, I moved to Hawaii last year um, in December to um, lead the team here, um, specifically with rope climbing. Um, my job is to put the climbing holds on the wall. So when you come in and you climb up, you see a bunch of climbing holds. We have them configured in a way um, where you can test yourself. Different, it varies in uh, different difficulties. Um, yeah, so we come in here, we, we change them um, four times a week. So every time you come in here, there's going to be something new for you. Wonderful. And last but not the least, Anthony. Hi there. Uh, my name is Anthony Bagnoli. I am the GM here at <coughs> High Climb. And I moved out to Hawaii about four years ago. I left a climbing gym in um, Brooklyn, New York, and started working at Hawaii Business Magazine. Um, and then I found out there were two guys who were opening a rock climbing gym here in Kaka'ako. And I was like, this is perfect timing. And I've been on the team since uh, April of last year. We opened in July of last year. So we're pretty, pretty young. Wonderful. Well, tell us about High Climb. Let's pull up the fourth photo. Um, tell us about High Climb. Anthony, let's, let's start with you since you are the fearless leader. So, um, High Climb is a rock climbing gym. We do offer four different di disciplines of rock climbing. Uh, what you can see in the photo on those short walls, we call them short, they're about 16 feet tall over foot high pads. That kind of climbing is called bouldering. On the side, you can see a tower um, with ropes hanging down, that's top roping. On the front of it is lead climbing, and on the backside are auto blades. We also offer a very robust uh, yoga program, fitness, personal trainers, which Nick is part of. Um, so we also have community space, co-working space, cafe. So it is kind of your like new kind of community center. Very awesome. Um, I want to pose this question to Andre. What exactly is a route setting manager? <laughs> awesome question. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely. Um, a position that is new in the industry as far as uh, my experience. Um, it's come from just coming into a gym and volunteering to being a full career um, where we're competitive. Um, I like to um, compare it to a restaurant. Um, some restaurants have chefs that sort of lead their kitchen. Um, I would consider the route setting manager to be a chef. Um, we prepare um, an experience for our guests and, and members to come in and, and enjoy themselves, to test themselves. Um, yeah, so that's sort of what we do. We, we cook up some fun movement and challenging routes for you to get on. Um, we love to get feedback. And um, yeah, so 
making sure we are engaging with um, everyone who comes in the door to find out what they might like and what they don't like, um, what they need as far as um, advancing in their climbing. Um, so yeah, we definitely, uh, there's a little bit of um, responsibility when it comes to making sure we're connecting with the community. Um, and then telling, I also lead a group of route setters who've been doing it. Some of them are new and um, I'm mentoring them on a lot of the technical skills that I've learned um, throughout the years. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been an amazing experience here in Hawaii, um, getting to um, share my experience with a gym that's pretty new. And um, yeah, it, it's awesome. I, I think that's wonderful. You mentioned that um, you do help folks out and, and, and any of you can answer this. Are there age restrictions when it comes to um, the people that you folks service? You know, I love to tell people our oldest member is 70 years old and our youngest member is three years old. So it is um, a very interesting sport. The um, Usually we recommend starting about age five because you've got the mental dexterity to figure out the problems um, and the physical ability for it. Younger than that, uh, you know, we get a lot of climbers who are having kids and so they are like coaching them through it and more attentive. So five is a pretty great age to start, but really it goes up. Um, I think anyone can climb. How much does it cost for membership at High Climb? So I'll take that one as well. Um, so we do a monthly membership. It is $99 a month with a $99 initiation fee. And that includes uh, unlimited access to the climbing, to our yoga and fitness classes, our community spaces, and our co-working space. Uh, we are open 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day. And one of our core values is providing climbing to people 365 days a year. So in our first year, we were open on Thanksgiving and Christmas, and we had 200 people check in in four hours. So the community has responded really, really well to that kind of offer. Wow, that's, that's amazing, Anthony. Nick, let me ask you this. As a trainer, do you folks work with groups or companies for activities like retreats? Here in the gym, we're talking about uh, as far as I know, and I've experienced you know, uh, the clients that I currently have, most of them are climbers, not all of them are climbers, but um, the sessions that we provide are actually not included with them. So there are condos we can purchase that actually get cheaper the more sessions you buy. So starting for a single session, uh, $75 a session. Okay, let's, gotcha. let's pull up the first photo. And I want you guys to address this while we're waiting for that. Um, what do you tell people who feel like they may not be fit enough to do rock climbing? And I, and I had kind of mentioned this to Nick before, like, for example, me personally, I feel like I may not be able to do whatever. I'm guessing that's you. <laughs> I may yeah, not be able yeah. to do that. Like, what do you tell individuals who feel like they may not be fit enough to try something like this? Okay, so the thing about high climb is it's very friendly from the beginner level all the way to the advanced climbers. And that has a lot to do with our chefs and our just feedback from the community. I started climbing back in say September, so I don't think climbing too long, but it definitely helps to have a good base of strength. But once again, the easiest routes here are pretty much like climbing a ladder. Once you get a walkthrough of the gym from our experienced team members, they'll kind of explain to you some technique. And it really, it, it's not all upper body as that picture would make you think. So just that route, which is probably cooked up by Andre, that was really unnecessary. That was just me flexing on you guys real quick. But yeah, you, anybody from a small child to, uh, as Anthony mentioned, or some of our older members can fly. So yeah, really don't doubt yourself. Get on the wall, try it out. You don't know unless you try it. Okay. Um, let's pull up the third photo. So 
uh, I understand that this is not just an indoor rock climbing facility. Andre, can you talk more about what else High Climb offers? Yeah, so in that photo, if you're looking at the hanging bars there, um, you can, it, right in the middle of it, there's a wood panel and there's some um, grips that you could hang on. Um, you can train your fingers strength specifically for rock climbing on those. Um, that's something that um, is a little bit more advanced um, when you're wanting to um, climb harder things. Um, finger strength is something that's very important. Um, so yeah, so we offer um, different training options for that. Um, yeah, we also um, have a youth team that comes and practices three times a week. Um, they're training to compete. Um, eventually, um, they'll be um, trained and strong enough to compete at the national level and um, hopefully at the Olympics, so on the world level, um, now that climbing has become an Olympic sport. I did not even know that. Thank you. Fun fact. <laughs> Anthony, did you want to add to that? I did. Um, so, you know, it's interesting. Climbing, unlike other sports, is really democratic um, in the sense that it has more to do with your um, ability to control your fear, your problem solving, and your technique. So you will see people who in other sports might be outclassed because of size or physical strength are outclassing other people because of their courage, because of their problem solving abilities. And as Dre was saying, with the kids team, we're hearing a lot from the parents. They're just doing better in school. They're attacking problems in a new, different way. So it is, it is one of those things that we just really encourage everyone. Um, it's kind of like yoga meets bodybuilding. I, it's very difficult to explain the first time. <laughs> On that note, let's pull up the video, just so people have an idea of what else High Climb offers. So if you guys can talk more about yeah, what's Yeah, so going this on. is our yoga and fitness program. Um, we offer modern dance, which you saw at the very beginning, uh, functional fitness, uh, which is our high-intensity workout classes. We have a really robust yoga program, Ashtanga, Mysore Yoga offered here. And High Climb, we're only one of two facilities in the state of Hawaii that offer that kind of yoga. Um, we do take more of a traditional um, take on yoga than the more Western version that you might be receiving, um, say at other yoga studios around the island. Um, we have certified personal trainers like Nick and his colleagues um, that help people. You know, a lot of climbers come in and they're intimidated by weights and they see them or they're intimidated by people who are using them. And so Nick and his team's job is really to help people condition um, themselves for climbing and it is one of those sports where you are, you're working on your mental, you're working on your physical, and in a, a lot of ways emotional because you are confronting these very human limitations. That, uh, that all sounds really compelling, Anthony. Now I understand why Nick is always like, you should come in and check us out. And I've been like, I don't know, that sounds really intimidating. But the way you explain it is very appealing. So thank you for that. We are going to go on break, but when we return, we will be asking more questions to our team here at High Climb. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. Today, we are talking about high climb, and we have three members 
of High Climb's leadership team. Anthony, let me pose this question to you. You mentioned that uh, you, as a facility, try to be open or are open 365 days a year. Is that right? Um, with COVID, <laughs> how did that affect you folks? Oh man, the COVID question. So we opened July 1st and everybody has their own COVID story. Um, ours actually begins in 2019. Uh, our owner got the lease for the building. Uh, so we began all the projects in 2019. We had the shutdown, as everybody probably remembers, about March 12th. And he got the lease like March 10th. He got the keys to our building. And so we immediately had a state lockdown and he was on the hook for everything. The walls coming to Island. Um, so as we started to build up, all of our walls actually were shipped in. Uh, we went with an American wall builder out of Utah. So it took five containers, a team of five uh, men and women working seven days a week, starting April 15th. And we just watched all of the regulations for COVID tick down. And so gyms and fitness classes were completely offline for a while. Then they brought us back on at 50% capacity. Um, Climbing or uh, fitness classes were only allowed up to six participants. Um, so as we were getting ready to open, we were just watching those numbers. Like, were we going to be able to even open this gym after a considerable investment? Um, and luckily, by July 1st, we were able to go to 50% capacity. Um, we hold about 280, uh, 268 people, uh, according to our fire code, in the building. The owners have asked that we maintain it at about 150, just so everybody's comfortable with all of the uh, pandemic restrictions. Because climbing is um, an individual sport, because the facility is open air, we have two large garage doors on either side. Our roof is actually one of those old Kakaako double roofs that are open at the top. We have birds that sometimes come and fly in. And when you climb to the top of our lead wall, you can actually look out across the tops of the roofs in Kakaako. Um, so it is a very, during the pandemic, it is a very open air, inviting space for people. Um, face masks are, you know, um, optional here. We have sanitizing stations throughout the facility. Our holds, um, Andre's team, strip, clean, and reset a section of the wall a day. At the end of five weeks, the entire gym has been reset and cleaned. Um, we have a staff that goes through every morning and sanitizes all of the benches and everything that everyone touches. So like I think any small business, the pandemic has really pushed us to, uh, you know, try new things to make things work. Wow. Thank you, Anthony, for going over that. Um, as part of High Climb's leadership team, what are some lessons that you've learned? Andre, let's ask you that question. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so it, as far as route setting, um, it's our responsibility to be as inclusive as we can. Um, that being um, making sure people who've never climbed before make it to the top of the wall and enjoy that experience, as well as challenging people who've been climbing their whole lives. Um, so we have a pretty broad um, span of, of clientele and, and users um, that we are catering to. Um, being as inclusive as we are, whether it's size, shape, um, definitely brings in a lot, lot more people than um, I'm used to seeing in climbing gyms, like let's say in mainland 10 years ago. Um, so seeing, touching on um, what Anthony mentioned earlier about it being a, more of a community center, because we do have offer a lot of um, options like our, our cafe and we have Wi-Fi and workspaces. Um, I also see it as a cultural center um, where people from all walks of life are able to come in here and all enjoy the same exact experience, um, getting either getting to the top of the wall or falling a lot. Um, because there's a lot of falling that happens and a lot of failure. Um, but yeah, no, um, that's that's a, been a huge lesson for me. I've I've definitely um, really enjoyed seeing the different um, types of people that that come in here. Um, yeah, all different cultures and backgrounds, um, kind of bringing. The climbing is bringing everyone together in this one space, and we're able to share and talk and, and enjoy it. Um, yeah, as long as we're doing our job, yeah, as long as we're doing our job, <laughs> creating climbs that, that are, you know, 
yeah, that everyone enjoys. That's awesome. You, all of you make such a good argument for anyone to check out High Climb. Uh, Nick, if, if I were to ask you the same question, which I am, like, what are some lessons that you've learned? Pretty new to this space here. So, uh, training, spearheading the uh, social training program started. What was that? Happening? Uh, uh, it was interesting. We we have to really market ourselves. There wasn't a huge push. Uh, it wasn't as popular as it is now. I mean, it, it's definitely taken off. Being a part of the CPT program as a group, uh, yeah, I'll actually overextend myself a little bit in the beginning. We've got a lot of clients in order to give, you know, like that to somebody and train them to the point that they're really getting the most out of it. Yeah, it's it's been a great learning experience. Now I'm in my groove. It's very nice. I have a bunch of regular clients. We're getting strong. We're getting the back to the COVID thing. It's going to help you. I've got a lot of problems. It's also it's insurance. Anthony, are you able to? Of course you are. <laughs> the same question. What are some lessons that you learned? <laughs> you know, it's so interesting. Somebody once described it as, um, it's such a good metaphor, as having a baby, right? And um, you want that baby to take that first step and you keep picking up that leg and forcing it and trying it. And then it moves its left leg and you're like, oh, my baby's a lefty. And so many times we've wanted this to walk and we thought, oh, it's going to make that first step with the right foot and it's the left foot that goes forward. And just being open to um, that evolution. We have an incredible response from the community that's joined us. Um, we have some grassroots groups that have sprung up, some that we've encouraged. On Friday nights, we have a wahine on the ropes and it's a holding space for women climbers to come together. 54% of our members identify as women. Um, that was not what we were expecting. This is following your community and, you know, providing them the things that they're looking for. We have a grassroots group of LGBTQ plus members that have started a group called Roxy. They're going to have their first um, climbing event July 8th. Uh, we have Kanaka Climbers, which is a local nonprofit here in Hawaii that works for the ethical and equitable access to outdoor spaces that holds a meetup once a month. They've been meeting here uh, for the past six months, once a month, giving information and education to climbers about exploring Hawaii and doing it in a respectful and honorable way, um, ethically and equitably. So yeah, just listening to the community and let them take the lead for us. Wonderful. And you mentioned July when there is a monumental significant date for high climb. Anthony, what is going on in July? Uh, it is our one year anniversary. We opened at 6 p.m. July 1st. And at 5 p.m. on July 1st, they were still finishing the walls. We had all of the people outside and they were literally cutting steel inside. And our wall builders told me they would be done at 5.30 and they were done at 5.30 on the dot. And so July 1st is our anniversary. Uh, we're gonna be starting it off with a giant barbecue for all of the team members at the owner's home. Um, and then we will be closing a little bit early on the 4th of July to give our team members that whole weekend off. But all throughout the month of July, we'll be celebrating different aspects of our community. And at the end of July, we're gonna have a uh, members only night here at the facility. That sounds awesome. Is there anything else that you would like to add, Nick? say that I hope to see you in here. I've been talking to you for a while. Uh, strength training, I'm going to default to that because that's like my specialty here. Um, really improves your life overall. Even if, you know, we, we all start at different points, even if it's from on and off a chair, like I have some, I've worked with older populations. Just having that strength in those ranges of motion give you some insurance 
comes to doing anything in life, right? Most people actually injure themselves grabbing something out of the back seat in their car. They twist their body and reach back. Oh, I took my back, right? Or you slip in the shower, you lose your balance for a second. If you're strong in the range of motion, you'll be fine. And that's ties into climbing. Coming here, getting into climbing, very definitely up. So, Kathleen, I want to see you in there. That's what I'm going to add. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. What about you, Andre? Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, um, I'd also like to see you come in here. Um, yeah, you're definitely um, not going to be the newest climber, which is awesome. There's definitely going to be somebody who comes in here after you, maybe while you're climbing, and you can share that same first-time experience. Um, I, I definitely want to encourage people to visit their climbing gyms, wherever you might be, wherever there's a local gym around you. And um, really, because it is a new industry, relatively, um, there's a lot of opportunities for growth and development within the industry. Um, like right now, if I want to get feedback from our community, we have an app that the users can use. They can upload videos of themselves. They can also comment and rate any of the climbs that they get on. They can, so that's, that's like a, a source of feedback um, that, that we can use. And yeah, I just encourage people to go into their, to your gym and have fun and see if you can communicate to the route setters. Thank you, Anthony, let's wrap up with you. Anything else you'd like to add in? How can individuals contact or reach out to you folks? Um, I definitely should not have ended with this. Our mission is to improve people's lives through indoor rock climbing. And it's so, um, it's so basic. You hear everybody trying to describe it. We all feel this thing when we climb uh, because it is so open, because it is so welcoming and so democratic. You're also overcoming this human limitation right next to another person, overcoming their human limitation. And you form the most incredible relationship. And, you know, rock climbers will be friends and come up to the front desk and ask for the name of the person they've been climbing with for months because they skipped the whole intro and got straight to being friends. And there's known that, um, what do you do for a living? It's all about how did you finish this problem and people working together in collaboration. So it is, as people are coming out of the pandemic, it's such a great opportunity for a healthy new um, awakening after the pandemic shutdown. They can reach us at hawaiiclimb, all spelled out, dot com on our website by calling us 808-888-2999. And they can email us at info at Hawaii, all spelled out, climb.com. Thank you again so much for being on the show. And again, for making a great argument for people out there, including myself, to check out Hi Climb. This has hey. been Fintech Hawaii's Connecting Hawaii Business. And we also want to thank Jay Fidel and the staff at Fintech Hawaii for making shows like this possible. We had Michael and Haley who helped us out today. Until next time, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.